And we're back with the breakfast now, looking at the effects of uh, subsidy removal and what plans do the Nigerian government have for the people of Nigeria? Well, all things being equal, the federal government will be removing the controversial policy of fuel subsidy. Now, the discussions have been narrowed to the nature and scope of the palliative designed to mitigate the anticipated spike in the cost of, you know, transportation, living and what have you. And as part of the measures to mitigate the effect of the policy, the federal government is saying that it has secured the sum of $800 million from the World Bank as part of its post-subsidy palliative plans. This is according to the Minister of Finance, Zainab Ahmed budget and national planning who disclosed this to state house journalists after you know the federal executive council meeting in fact that here that holds every wednesday and uh, that meeting was presided by the president muhammad buhari on wednesday now last year it's important to note that following the 3.35 trillion hour petrol subsidy budget the federal government said it would stop under recovery payments in June 2023, in 2022 subsidy or under subsidy recovery cost the government the sum of 3.3 trillion in 11 months alone. Uh, the, the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zena Parkman, said $800 million has been received from the World Bank and will be disbursed to 10 million households considered to be the most vulnerable. That's to cushion the effect of subsidy removal. Meanwhile, the government had also said that retaining petrol subsidy cost in Nigeria, uh, it, it's tantamount to 7 trillion naira. That's in 2023. So if the government decides to say, hey, we're going to continue subsidy, we're looking at 7 trillion naira. The Nigerian government uh, has said that. Now, in the first six months of 2023, the government has also said that uh, by implication, subsidy payment would persist till the end of uh, June. And uh, for 2023, and fuel subsidy payment in Nigeria is going to consume 3.36 trillion naira. We have, uh, I guess, joining us this morning to make sense of the conversation. Biodu Shomi, thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. I'd like to share your thoughts. How do you feel about this social uh, investment action by the government to cushion the effect of, you know, fuel subsidy removal at the end of six months in 2023? Well, in the first instance, I'm one of those who um, have never accepted the fact that we had subsidy. Uh, you only need to go back to the Petroleum Act, which has now been um, replaced by the PIA. Uh, that uh, you will realize that it was deliberately 445,000 barrels of oil a day was allocated, you know, for domestic consumption. It had never been part of what we exported in the past. And that was meant for domestic consumption to be refined locally. And then with just a marginal profit according to the federal government. The essence of that was for the benefit of Nigerians and in recognition of the poor state of our infrastructure in order to minimize um, po poverty in our country. And we had that situation. That situation has not been changed around through the PIA, um, Petroleum Industry Act, um, which is the latest regulation in the whole sector. What the PIA has simply done is to remove or to, 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 to annul, you know, the Petroleum Act, which, you know, gave this benefit to Nigerians and replaced it, you know, um, uh, completely with a new act, which did not make this kind of provision of 445,000 barrels of oil a day for domestic consumption. So what we have seen happening is that since then, government has been claiming, even prior to it, they've been claiming that uh, there's subsidy. What they mean by subsidy is when you now price the same oil. Show me, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, go ahead. We, we seem to have been disconnected. Go ahead, then. I can, okay. They are pricing it at the international spot market price rate. And then with other surcharges like shipping, new custom duties on what should never have been at, uh, attracting uh, customs importation duties, simply because if it is defined within the country. And added all this to it, and then they now calculate that and say, look, these are the subsidies. That is what they're calling subsidies. 
um, as it stands today. But that apart, now that government is claiming they want to remove subsidy, that is basically to increase the pump price of a liter of oil. What part of the things they're planning to do is Oh, well, show me. Uh, we seem to have been disconnected, but uh, we're hoping that you'll continue with your thoughts. I, I, I'm with you. Okay, go ahead. That there are more, there are buses available for transportation. The buses on which roads? On bad roads? The roads are bad. And we're targeting 50 million households. That is the most vulnerable Nigerians who live in the rural areas, who live in the creeks. They don't have the roads to use the buses on. That's the first problem, you know, with the approach to it, I will be uh, will object to a situation where we give, you know, direct um, like what they did with uh, trader money, which is almost unaccountable, you know, to to people. We should learn from society where food deregulation are taking place. For instance, uh, in in United States, you have what they call the Baker's Act, you know, to intervene uh, in 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 ensuring that no American suffers, you know, poverty unduly. In the UK, you have what they call the social security system, the welfare system, which ensures that you have the minimum, you know, accommodation, minimum amount of money to spend on a monthly basis, even if you are not working. And they have it as a token. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear Hello? you. Go ahead. Yes. So to take account to take account of that. So in Nigeria, we have chapter two of the Nigerian constitution, which makes provision for the world. Show me, can you hear me? Who are unemployed, we have not made it justiciable. That is, you cannot go to court on it. You cannot just go to court to enforce the chapter two of the Nigerian constitution on the welfare of Nigeria. So consequently, it means there is no protection, no form of protection for the very, very poor people in our country. I am more worried about the multiplier effects of removal of whatever they call the subsidy, which I term to be increase in the, um, in the pump price of petrol, on the whole economy, particularly on the working class and the unemployed and the very, very majority poor people living in Nigeria. Prices of goods and commodities will skyrocket. Seriously. And we have not been able to replace the means of transportation, for instance, the railway, across the country in a way that goods can be moved faster and cheaper so, uh, so, to our country. So, so then, don't, don't you think that this move by the government, I mean, uh, borrowing $800 million from the World Bank to, you know, send across 10 million uh, households, we're looking at 50 million Nigerians there, as a social investment program, to cushion the effect of this, uh, don't you think that that's you know a plus on the side of government? That's that's effective. It would also go a long way to help cushion the effect. Well, well, in my view, if we are withdrawing seven, about seven eight um, uh, billion dollars of revenue that will be lost, you know, that's the new money that government will raise from the moving. Uh, what do they call it? What they call subsidy? That is increasing the price from home price of um, a, a liter of oil. Uh, that will save the. Uh, that will be added revenue of seven to eight billion dollars. What is the point in saying allocating eight hundred million dollar? You know, uh, as palliative. To me, that is a drop in the ocean. It will not solve the problem. It is not enough. Hopefully, the. the this government is going away. We are hoping a new government will come in on May 29, and then we'll be able to properly review it and listen to Nigerians, you know, and stakeholders within the industry, uh, so that we can come out with a proper solution to this problem. Eight hundred million dollar is a drop in the ocean. We are talking about fifty million at all, you know. Uh, 10 fifty million, million persons, ten million household, fifty million Nigerians. Ten, yeah, ten million household. Uh, ten. 10 million households, which is about 50 million Nigerians, out of a population of over 200 million. How many Nigerians are without a bank? That will tell you the extent you, you can easily gauge 
the extent of Nigerians outside, you know, even this uh, catchment area. Uh, you go by CBN figure. The CBN told IMF that only 45% of Nigerians are within the financial system. So basically, you are talking about 55% of Nigerians in the rural areas or in the creeks, you know, who are almost not stakeholders in their own economy. So uh, that, that would translate to about 110, 120 million. So the 800 uh, million dollars is a drop in the ocean. It will not basically fix the roads. It will buy the buses, but those buses will, within a short time, you know, become an eyesore because of the state of our roads. Our roads are not safe. When oh, you no, 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 but I, I mean, uh, are bad. but um, this particular phone, according to the minister, uh, is, is there's going to be a cash transfer. So it's like you're handing over uh, cash, you know, to this number of persons at the end of the day. But again, just as we coast this down because we're out of time, I'd like to ask you, uh, what do you make of the rationale that we have to borrow, you know, to cushion the effect of a policy which is the removal of subsidy what do i think of what what do you make of you know the the action of government borrowing to fund uh, a certain policy which is making uh measures available to mitigate the effect of subsidy removal so one policy taking another policy action the fact that we're borrowing to fund this particular action what do you make of it? Oh, okay. Yeah, when you look at, um, <laughs> we've already borrowed so much to the extent that we, we are finding it difficult to pay back. It's one of the reasons why government wants to uh, now increase the home price of petrol with a view, which they call removal of subsidy, with a view to be able, you know, to run government businesses and also pay off the debt, part of the debts, which... Um, we, we, we have borrowed. So to now borrow from World Bank, though they call it a grant, um, we have not been told whether that grant is in form of loan or whether it's a, is, is, um, is, is a, a partnership um, grant or whether it's, um, uh, it's attracting low interest rate. We don't know. Or whether it's just sector. We don't know. The details are not yet out there in the public. But what seems very clear to me is that borrowing at this stage of our life should not even be an option um, when we have to deal with the issue of um, solving the economic challenges we are faced with. The country is already overburdened you know, by debt. Even though our debt ratio to GDP is still within the tolerable uh, limit. But the fact of the matter is the repayment and the fact that we are a mono economy. Our own foreign exchange Anna, is oil, and it is not reliable. The prices can go up and come down anytime, and that can create problems for the country to uh, make repayment. This is precisely the reasons why we like the foreign exchange, you know, to even allow the airlines to evacuate um, uh, their own um, revenue from our own country. So I don't think we should be going ahead with borrowing. There's nothing wrong with borrowing if it can repay itself. But if you are borrowing to give money to people in terms of them um, handouts, you know, to, to 10 million or so, um, I don't think that is why. Because that is, uh, you are borrowing to consume, you are not borrowing to invest. Mm. Uh, Beyond the show me, we have to go at this point in time. Thank you so much. Uh, it's been a delight having you share your thoughts on this particular issue. Then we're hoping that the government will pay attention to some of the issues that you've raised and then maybe we'll probably might just have, you know, a better one at the end of the day. Thank you once again. Thank you for having me. All right, then. That's the size of our conversation, the end of it at this point in time, The Breakfast. I appreciate that you have been part of the show from 7 o'clock up until now. We will be joining the newsroom at 9 o'clock for the news brief. Now, and if you missed out on any part of the conversation, that's on The Breakfast. We ask that you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, subscribe to YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa, Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Bobo. Have a great morning.